Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be looking at Future State, Batman Superman, issue number two. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, a video series where we talk comics. And if you're new and like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and sharing. And with that, yeah, like I said, Future State, Batman Superman, issue number two. Let's get it over with. Written by Jean Luen Yang, with art by Ben Oliver and Steven Segovia, colors by Arif Prianto, and letters by Tom Napolitano. And this issue begins with Batman discovering Mr. Toad reeling out an incapacitated Superman and is attacked by another mutant whose entire body has been transformed by the false face serum. Because he's unable to locate a pressure point weakness, Batman uses a concussion detonator to knock him out, but finds the octopus tentacles are still able to attack and he's thrown out a window, landing near the homeless people Superman helped in the previous issue. Batman, worried that they could still be Magistrate undercover, calls his bike and gets out of the area fast. Meanwhile, Superman awakens to see both Mr. Toad and Professor Pig, in which Pig reveals a kryptonite drill and tells the Man of Steel that he's in an art studio and that he's the artist's medium. Batman at this time places a cryogenic sleeve on his hurt leg to subdue the pain, before cutting back to Superman once again who attempts to appeal to the humanity of Mr. Toad, knowing that he doesn't really want to be a part of this. Back with Batman, the Dark Knight is attacked by a magistrate droid and quickly destroys it, immediately seeing a few of the eye laser rats skitter from the head. We then see that these eyes are also on pigeons and bats, which Batman had collected one of the bats, finding a transmission chip and deduces the location of where Superman is being held, now coming face to face with Professor Pig. Professor Pig monologues for a moment before activating a chip on him that injects the serum into his arms, turning his hands into more heads. In the meantime, Mr. Toad decided to help out Superman, but they are stopped by a large mutant bearing Superman's crest, and a fight ensues as Batman and Pig appear, with Batman telling them to switch opponents. The two do so, and both quickly dispatch their foes, with Superman using his heat vision to then destroy the lab. The next day, Batman and Superman enlist the help of Animal Man to round up the mutated animals being used to monitor the city, before heading to one of Batman's micro caves where Superman begins discussing options to deal with the Magistrate when Batman cuts him off to say that's not happening, and that the Magistrate is prepared for Superman, even showing him a harvested clone of Superman's eye, nearly blasting him with it. Superman begrudgingly agrees and leaves after Batman demanded it. The book then wraps up with Professor Pig breaking out of prison and Superman returning Mr. Toad to his daughter the beacon to call him should they need him. And while it's better than the last issue, it's still not great. For one, I think that the thought boxes give away way too much information and kind of also double down on what we're seeing on the page as well. What I mean by that is the art does well enough to tell me what's going on on the page with the thought boxes just more or less telling me what I'm seeing on the page. For example, we see Superman subdued and, you know, strapped to this table and Batman in the thought boxes and it's saying Superman subdued, they must have been ready for him, which when we think back to the last issue, Batman had seen the kryptonite, that seemed fairly obvious. And even then, the description of the false face serum was described in a way as if we were reading it for the first time. Almost like the book is holding my hand throughout, afraid that I'm either going to miss something or I forgot something from the previous issue, which almost feels patronizing to a degree because I almost feel like my intelligence is being insulted. And while it seeks to give me an explanation for a bunch of things, it also tends to leave out other things that came up in the book but were never addressed. For one, you got all the animals with the eyes on it. You know, it's, uh, you know, clones of Superman's eyes, apparently, you know, because that's what Batman calls it. And I wonder, how did they get Superman's DNA? The book doesn't allude to the Magistrate maybe having any other Kryptonians. And given that these animals were fairly prevalent in both issues one and two, it seemed like a really big plot point that I thought they were going to touch on, but they never did. So in effect, it's like too much of something we already know and not enough of what we don't. Also, I don't think Batman's rationale for cutting Superman out of the battle with the Magistrate is entirely justified as Batman shows Superman that, yeah, they have all this firepower and Batman's solution to it is to bench one of his most powerful players. I mean, I get it. The Magistrate has shown that they have the firepower. They are basically prepared to deal with somebody like Superman, but 
I do wonder, would it be better or worse to have Superman around as soon as all of these animals with these clone Superman eyes start blasting everybody? And even then, I gotta wonder, what about Wonder Woman? What about The Flash? What about Green Lantern? Aquaman? You know, you have the Justice League. If the Magistrate is packing firepower like that, it's a problem. A problem too big for one person, it seems. Because even as Superman agrees to leave, let's be honest, we already know Batman's going to fail. And considering they've been in really crazy, dangerous situations before, I just, I don't feel like this is the move Batman would make next. But I do get it. I understand the point of the book itself, which is more or less to tell us why Superman is not going to help Batman with the Magistrate. I just think it could have been done better. On the plus side, Superman felt like less of a dummy hair and actually did some things I liked, like appealing to the better nature of Mr. Toad. Luckily, it paid off. I also really dug Professor Pig. He's actually relatively one of my favorite Batman villains. Because I dig that pig mask and his whole hostile styled approach to things. Then hey, Animal Man. Then when it comes to the art, I thought it was decent. It got the job done. I like the use of colors and shadows in this, particularly in that one panel where Batman chucks the kryptonite into the monster. And the shot of Superman going Super Saiyan was, you know, kind of neat. So while improving on the first, it's still not fantastic. It has decent ideas, but I think holds the reader's hands a little too much in some areas without providing enough information in other areas, which creates a fairly average to less than average experience. So with that, I'm going to give Future State Batman Superman issue number two a five out of 10. So Future State Batman Superman issue number two, what did you think about this book if you've read it? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.